Good morning, Las Vegas. It's another day in paradise. I always say that because I love Las Vegas. We are having, uh, we had a tremendous first quarter and I want to just tell everybody that we sold 151 homes a day in March. That's incredible to me. Uh, yesterday, uh, we closed 211. End of the month, we closed 211. That was fantastic. We listed 101. That's fantastic. And we put 115 under contract. So, you know, life is moving along. My life is moving along. We're going to talk a little bit about the market today. Uh, let me see if I can. Okay. We're going to talk a little bit about the market today. I want to let everybody know that um, year to date, our average, now average is different than median. Okay. That takes all the homes, puts them in a basket and shakes them out and divides and our average price is $399. And that, of course, takes into consideration the uh, million dollar homes and the $80,000 uh, condos and homes. So uh, that's the average overall when you look at the fact that we've done $9.285 billion, 9 .2, almost $9.3 billion in volume. That is a lot of volume. And last year, the average, again, um, for this same time period was 335,000 and we did 6.5 billion. So we are so far ahead. Um, and I updated the uh, home uh, equity chart because I think um, it speaks well now for the first quarter. If somebody bought a home the end of, Jan the end of December, first week of January, uh, they have their home has probably appreciated twenty thousand dollars if it was a medium priced home of three forty five, so that is good information to share with people. We are still seeing appreciation, and um, that's a lot to do with a tight inventory, as you know. And also, I want to just uh, shout out today to everybody that I put the um, office names uh, up here that I use to find out. Uh, uh, how many I buyers we have in the market. And I just want to tell you that in 2020, same time period, first quarter, uh, the I buyers did about 1100 deals. This same time period, they did a little over a thousand. So they're not taking over our market, not even close. So just everybody, don't worry about it. Good morning, Frank. So good to see you this morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Yes, it is a good morning. Oh my goodness. I walked this morning and it was beautiful, beautiful. And I walked pretty early. And it's interesting because I, I usually do the same trek so that I know my mileage and everything and <clears throat> get some of my heart rate going. Anyway, as I go down, I notice now the sun is shifting. So I'm not getting the, you know, the sun in my eyes as much, which I like uh, as the sun comes up and I'm going down the hill. Good morning, Karen. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. So this little chart, now I posted some things in the group. I posted this chart in the group that you can just print out and use. Oh, good morning, Joan Bennett. How are you? Good morning. I haven't seen you for a while. Thank you for chiming in. I love it when I know who's here. <laughs> um, so anyway, I printed this chart. What I did in the group is I, this chart here that I'm circling, I printed that. And I think it's really a telling tale of real estate investing and real estate home ownership, which we love. So I did that on a separate, took all this other stuff out of there so that you can show people for the next three months what we did the first quarter of this year and the previous 10 years and why real estate is such an awesome investment. And so I also have been starting to get rid of my branding at the bottom so that you can print this out and uh, use it for your own marketing your own marketing. So did that. That's in the group. Um, put a lot of stuff in the, in the, uh, in our group this morning. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about the market. And if you have an agent formula website, um, Howard, uh, Dr. Young did a little uh, recap of the, the market this quarter and he did it. Um, a couple of weeks ago. He hasn't done one yet, but uh, we blog, we, we put this in the blog because it has some very interesting uh, information. And I think that if I can get it here, 
<laughs> you know me, everybody. This uh, I get frustrated a little bit when things don't work the way I want them to. Anyway, I'll go get it. It's not a big deal. So he said the housing market in January. Now he references January in this quarter because that's how we started. It continued to be strong, but there's some worrying signs that are developing. Okay, every extremely tight market conditions and a swiftly moving market means that for buyers who are succeeding, the price appreciation on their home is quite strong. However, home price run-ups are due to tight inventory and mortgage rates beginning to inch higher could spell affordability challenges, particularly for first time home buyers. And we know that that, uh, that affects us. So uh, let me just see if I can uh, go grab that. Uh, Jimmy might join us today, but he didn't. I love Jimmy. Uh, all right, I, can, I found it. So I want everybody, it's, it's three minutes, but I just want you to listen to it. And uh, let's put this up here and let's listen to him. Let's see. Well, before I do that, let me solo him. <laughs> there we go. Hello, this is Lawrence Yoon, a Chief Economist with National Association of Realtors. The housing market in January continues to be strong, uh, but there are some worrying signs that is developing. So let's look first at the January sales figures, which is the second highest monthly pace on a seasonally adjusted basis since 2006. The market continued to remain strong with buyer activity rising better than 20% from January of 2020. Regionally, we saw all four major regions with better than 20% growth. But if there is some concern, uh, it's out in the West region where on a month-to-month -month basis, uh, it declined more than 3%. Related to the supply, simply not enough homes for sale. 1.9 month supply. These are extremely tight market condition. The listed home is uh, able to find a buyer signing up the contract uh, within 20 days on average. So that is a very swift moving market and the buyers are getting frustrated by lack of inventory. Those buyers who are succeeding, the price appreciation is quite strong, 14% higher from January of one year ago. So what are some worrying signs? The affordability challenges from strong price run up for the first time buyers. But the second concern is that absolute low point on mortgage rate may be over. We saw mortgage rate average 2.7%, in December and January, but this will begin to inch higher. Mortgage rate may average 3% or maybe a little higher than 3%. Nothing to be concerned about, but the absolute low point in mortgage rate is likely to be over. Overall for 2021, I am still optimistic. Given the strength in the first quarter, and much higher anticipated sales activity in the second quarter of this year, given that there is a very low base to compare the second quarter of last year during the lockdown, even accounting for slightly lower sales in third and fourth quarter. Lower sales this year compared to last year, home sales will still be up 15% on an annual basis. So the outlook remains strong, best to you in your business opportunity. Thank you. So what he said in the end was that we're still going to see a 15% increase in sales, even though the interest rate is going to inch up a little higher. And it was 2.7% average last year. And he said, we're going to see it a little bit above 3%, which we're already seeing that this year. And of course, that's going to affect affordability for some people. Now, for right at the mark of 3%, basically for every 100,000 in mortgage, it's 
of about 400 in payment. So, you know, um, that may or may not knock people out of the, the water. And I was hoping that Jimmy be here today because I want to talk a little bit about that with him. But we'll wait. We'll save that for another day when he's here. So uh, anyway, I thought that was very interesting. So one of the things that I wanted to show everybody today, let's see. Where did, it, where did it go? There it is. So I was thinking about this and not sure. Go up there. Oh, so low on, so low off. There we go. We'll hide him. Okay. This form, this is from the, uh, you know, Department of Business and Industry, NARED. Um, the authorization to negotiate directly with seller. And I just want everybody to kind of to think about this. I, I, um, I kind of like it because I think anything that we can do to, uh, to, for the buyer to be able to present the offer to the seller right now um, might be a good idea. So the seller agrees and the seller uh, broker authorizes that a buyer's agent or broker may present offers uh, and negotiate directly with the seller. I don't know. Maybe that might help our market a little bit. Um, I'd like to know everybody's thoughts on it. You know, think about it today. Maybe we'll talk about it tomorrow. But for me, I, I would like for a buyer to be able to directly present to the seller. Buyers right now, I mean, sellers right now probably think, oh, you know, we're, we're going to get more. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. But if, we, but if I represent a buyer and I can, you know, tell the seller how much the buyer loves the home and, and, um, and present the offer, in light of my my buyer, that might make the difference in me or my buyer getting the deal on, which I don't know. I just I think I like it for a lot of reasons. So I uh, wish Jimmy were here today. I'd love we'll, we'll talk to Jimmy tomorrow about it. But um, think about it. And tomorrow, perhaps we'll have a discussion about that. I think that that's probably not a bad idea. So let me hide that. Let's talk about some other things today. Um, so I had put in the group, I put in that, uh, what the new pre-licensing, the continuing education requirements and everything that's coming in 2021. And this is very simply stated. And I think that it's very well written by the division. I think the division is getting much, much better communicating with us. And I'm happy to see that, especially being a broker. I'm happy to see that we all have clear cut direction. And there's a lot of questions. And so the, the board uh, has even done a question and answer, which I thought was good. Um, let's see, let me back up just a second here. Things to remember. Okay, new, new continuing ed requirements. So this talks about um, when does a 36 hour requirement take effect? So licensees whose license expiration date is on or after 30, October 31 must submit 36 hours of continuing ed. So it's not the 1st of October. The 1st of October seems to be more for people who are just now getting their license. So anyway, again, posting that in the group. And then things to remember. So if you're over 65 and you've been in good standing for 30 years, <laughs> um, there you can apply for an exemption to complete a reduced number of CE credit. Uh, salespersons must complete three hours each in agency contracts, ethics, and law. Brokers must complete an additional three hours of broker management and permit holders must complete the additional hours required for each permit. Basically, they didn't change it for people who have been in the business 30 years or, um, or you know, and been in good standing and are 65 or older. And uh, when uh, Jimmy and I uh, discussed this the other day in our class, we had some pushback. People thought, hey, the older I get, the more I need to, to remember. <laughs> I need to be reminded of what, uh, of what the laws are. And I, I think that the basic laws, uh, if you get 12 hours, you know, you're going to, I think that's okay if you're over 65. Um, the new things coming, the, the, the new hours, I think, are going to impact more the, the agents, the younger agents. Because I know that when being a broker, that when agents first get in the business, you know, I don't know that they really realize uh, how how many restrictions there are and how much we really have to be careful of how we dot the I's and cross the T's. And we have to know the contracts. We have to be able to explain each item in a contract, whether it's the listing contract 
or the buyer, the RPA. And we have to know the importance of the duties owed. And so a lot of these things, if you take additional uh, education like they're now going to require, I think you're going to hear more brokers talk about those things. And they are adding risk management, which I think is an excellent addition. And so Jimmy and I are writing um, a course for that. Um, and we're also a broker, we're going to do a buyer broker class because we feel with things that are stirring around that the seller may not be able to pay the buyer's agent in the future. So anyway, regardless, you still need to know what the buyer broker's uh, pros and cons are, what the ins and outs are, and what you can do and you can't do it. And whether or not, it, is it a binding contract? So far, not really. So somebody can sign a buyer's broker with more than just one agent. So that's a concern I know that um, comes up in our classes when we teach contracts. And let's see what else I wanted to go over today. Um, let's see, important, important. Yeah, one other thing that um, speaking about the law and everything, I am, um, there is a table of contents that I posted in the group um, for you to, um, it's, it's for the Nevada uh, law on real estate. And it covers, it covers very succinctly the law. And it's 144 pages. And I put it in the group. You can go to the file section and you can download it. But then I also posted the table of contents, um, which, will, which makes it easy to find whatever you're looking for. And if you're a broker, I think that you should have this, you know, this sitting in a notebook out somewhere in a conference room or someplace where agents are going to see it. Maybe you have a little bullpen area where your computers are, whatever. But I think that, you know, you should have this in plain view. Uh, it, it talks, I'll just go through the, there's only six main uh, chapters. Nevada law on real estate agency. I think that everybody needs to get very clear about you cannot talk to a client about a deal until they sign the duties owed. That's the first thing that you're required to do is to tell them what your responsibilities are to them. And, um, and then the sources where income comes from, revenue comes from. Now that may become a very important piece of our future, especially if the buyer has to pay us buyer's agents, the commission. Think about that. So, um, things for which we're not liable for, uh, how we terminate agency. And that's an interesting chapter. And then they go through a review. That's 22 pages of, and, and they've got pictures on there. It's very easy reading. I don't know who created it for them, but it really, really is good. And then the second chapter is Nevada law on fiduciary responsibilities and the duty of honesty, how you put the client before yourself. And what is absolute fidelity? Some of these things, you know, you think, oh my gosh, I, 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 mean, I need to look at that, right? Um, the third chapter is Nevada law on brokerage agreements, creation and termination. We were just mentioning that. Types of representation. There's two types of representation in Nevada, single agency and multiple agency. And you need to know the difference. Uh, Nevada law on offers and purchase agreements. That's chapter four. Uh, counter offers, what the general law is, purchase agreements, alternative contracts. And then chapter five is Nevada law on disclosures and the when, who, and how of disclosure. Very important. Very important. You know, when you do an inspection, when you have an inspector do an inspection, you have to be careful how, what you say about that inspection, because you're not a licensed inspector, if, unless you are, but most of us aren't. So you have to be careful and you have to rely on what the licensed and bonded uh, inspector said and direct your questions if you have any from the buyer and seller to the inspector. You have to be careful not to just give your opinion, even though it might be blatant to you. And yes, um, uh, you need to tell uh, the buyer, if you represent the buyer, that the inspection does not cover the roof. And to me, that's part of a disclosure when you um, when you highly recommend, which is italicized in our contract, our RPA, we highly recommend that you get an inspection. We also have to say that, I, at least I would say that this does not cover the roof. If you want a roof 
certification, that has to come from a certified roofer. So that's something else that uh, sometimes causes issues. And then um, let's see, number five is the disclosures. Number six is Nevada law on advertising. And advertising, well, what they did for us too is that they, they being the division, they did this frequently asked questions about the advertising requirements. And um, it says the licensee have to put the full number. And it says licensees need to include the license designation letter, S, B, or BS, et cetera, but they do not need to include the zeros. They also do not need to include letters after the license number, such as dot I N D V or dot LLC. Does license number need to be on all signs? Now this question comes up a lot in our classes actually. If a licensee's name is on the sign, then the licensee's number needs to be with it. So you just, you know, it's like now you've got your first name, last name, and your number. <laughs> you've got three things that you that go together. So if it is a generic open house sign with no agent or brokerage, then no. If it is a sign advertising the brokerage, then the broker's number should be included. Now, this is something I was not aware of when this law first came out. When this, um, and so I, we have to go back to our open house signs that say Love Las Vegas Realty, for instance, and John has to put his uh, license number on there, his broker number on there. So, um, so right now, I don't know, I think he's getting it done, but in the beginning, we were not in compliance. Uh, so do I need to include my license number on all social media posts? This is really an interesting one. So if you add links back to your main page and your main page has your license number somewhere on it, uh, either in the page itself or the about section, that's sufficient. We just need to be able to locate the number. So I think, you know, I, when this first came out, oh my gosh, everybody was putting uh, everything everywhere, you know, and that's not always um, good for advertising actually, uh, because it just isn't. People, consumers want to know what they want to know and they'll find you if they want to kind of attitude out there in the social media world. So, you know, if you've got your, on your page somewhere in the about section on LinkedIn, in the about section on Facebook, if you state who you work for, what your name is on your license, that's very important, and what your license number is. Somewhere on the page and the about section, the division is right here telling us, this came right out of the division's bulletin, that that's sufficient. Lots of, we've had lots of questions about that. I know people do reels, they do all kinds of, you know, they do stories. And basically if, the, if, if somewhere on there, it goes back to your page and that's the key, you know, like when you post that, it had, they need to be able to go back to your, to your page to find it. Otherwise you need to put it on there. So, um, yeah, we can discuss that. If you have any questions, please ask. Um, and then are there differences in requirements? Uh, so let me just uh, put this in the forefront a little bit. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I do it wrong, honestly. Nope, 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 come on. All right, let's do something else. I love this. Uh, um, let me just do this, get rid of the flowers. Okay, advertising real estate on billboards, television, bus stops, shopping carts, websites, social media, whichever medium you use, the same rules apply. So there you go. That's really uh, says it all right there. So I think this is very helpful. Uh, again, that'll be, um, it's in the group. You can print it out, keep it by your side. If you're a broker, I think that, you know, you might want to send this out to your agents because this is very concise. They did a great job at making it easy to understand. In the, the first time this came out with social media, especially, it was very ambiguous. And we actually had to call the division because we, we develop websites. Like really, what do we need to do here? And so we had them email us exactly what we needed to do because we don't want to be out of compliance, especially because the owners, uh, John and I are brokers <laughs> and we uh, want to protect our company and all the agents that uh, own our websites. So, all right. Um, that's, it's, I think I was in on that one. We did that. Yeah. 
things to remember. Um, if you hold a property management permit expiring on or after the 31st, you will be required to submit nine hours of CE and property management. And Jimmy and I are also going to do one or two courses, perhaps, in property management. And because that's uh, the, the hours have increased. And so we will step up to the plate and do more courses um, because now it's required um, more hours. And we are going to have a panel. One of our co courses is going to include a video of a panel of uh, prominent uh, property managers, property managers in Las Vegas. And that will prove to be very, very interesting. And it's interesting already because there's different opinions uh, about the interpretation of the law. And of course, right now with the eviction and everything going on, <laughs> uh, that in itself is, uh, is challenging with the CDC saying one thing and our eviction uh, saying something else. Hey, if the lease is terminated, can you terminate somebody? Can you tell them, to, can, you, can you give them a 30 day notice? Um, the majority of people say, yes, you can. As long as they're paying their rent, then you're not putting them in harm's way. So anyway, uh, that'll be a lively, that'll be a lively discussion, a lively, it'll be fun to take that class, I'm sure. I hope you all are aware that I'm having a social media class. Yes, it'll be the 8th and the 12th. It'll be, um, I think Thursday is the 8th and Monday is the 12th from 10 to 2. And we are going to do some really deep diving. It's always new things. That's why we don't do these every month because it's a lot of work creating the class for all the new things that Facebook is doing. And we want to take our time and make sure that, you know, we have the best class out there. And when you take it, you also get 30 days. If you're not an Agent Formula member, you get 30 days of use of the website for your content so that you can download the guides and, and have some uh, materials that you need to put to post out there and be giving information. And we get into how you do things. If, you're, if your LinkedIn isn't up to snuff, we'll, by the end of the class, it will be up to snuff. Same with your Facebook and your personal page and your business page. And we're going to tell, we also, we give you videos to use for marketing, tell you how to use them, how to target an audience, how to do a, uh, a custom audience, and then how to create a lookalike audience, which just doubles your reach out there for engagement. And because you do these things um, that Facebook offers, then they are very, very giving in the engagement uh, and getting you to the right places uh, for engagement. And of course, then there's the consistent lead gen ads. You get four of those, four of those. One is the retirement community. If you're doing retirement communities, one is a, a first time home buyers. One is a virtual tour, which gets a lot of uh, action. And then the other one is a um, uh, the Marilo guide for relocation. So we cover those four target areas and uh, and then we teach you how to follow up. So we, it's, it's eight hours, four hours on a Thursday and four hours on Monday. And we delve really deep into it. And if you would like to sign up, let's go, let's put this up on the screen here. You go to our calendar and I put a April up here for you. And it says um, Facebook and LinkedIn strategies day one, click on that and it'll take you to the sign up page. And, um, and then you'll be signed up for all these goodies. And, and uh, it's a good time, you know, it's a good time to learn. We got the, the busiest season ahead of us and it, it'll be a great time to learn all how to just get your, get everything in line here for social media. And um, of course, of course, of course, I can't uh, get off today without mentioning uh, that we're having Brian Buffini and what we did we talked to um, Brian's staff and they said, why don't we pro why don't we postpone the start date instead of tomorrow? It will be next Friday. And they said they're seeing that people um, because of Easter, you know, it's Good Friday. And maybe that was not the best day to start the class. So having said that, you can sign up uh, on uh, BEE.Vegas uh, for for the class and it will start next week. So put this up here. So hundred days to greatness. Um, every Friday, we're going to be joining together from one to three for 21 Fridays. Now I want to mention to you that in the event, 
you just think, oh, I can't do it for 21 Fridays. That's okay, because you still have access to the videos and the materials and the action, uh, the activities section and things like that. The classroom, visiting, the, coming and joining in the classroom just um, is just like icing on the cake, so to speak. But if you don't think you can make it into class or don't want to come into the classroom, that's okay. You can still, we're going to zoom it. You can still see everything. And not only are we going to zoom it, but because then you'll get to see us like you were in the classroom and then you can see and you can, and you can watch that at your leisure too. You can also have access because you, you pay for the class. You have access to the member area of the Feeney's website so that you can actually watch the modules. You can watch the last one, this one, and the next one. So, um, you know, you, there's, I'm trying to tell you, there's no reason not to take the class uh, because you have time. Maybe Friday afternoons is not good for you. Maybe you wanna do it in the evenings or something like that. Well, you can at your, but if you wanna join us in the classroom and network with us and uh, laugh with us and have some refreshments, then uh, come to the class, but you don't have to. Um, it'll just be produced every Friday from one to three, and then you can do what you want to on your own time. So love you all. Got to go. See you soon. See you tomorrow. Hopefully Jimmy will join us. I think he will.